Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Showing Up to Life podcast and YouTube channel. My name is Art Burns. I'm excited to be here. I, you know, excited might not be the most accurate word, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm always honest. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm very tired. Uh, yesterday, I didn't record any content yesterday, not here, nor on TikTok, nor I did do a Facebook post uh, about my upcoming um, workshop that we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I didn't record a video and uh, I missed you. And I'm sorry that I can get, didn't get to record a video, but it turns out my son was uh, was quite ill and uh, not not real ill. I shouldn't say he just really was not feeling good. Like he was, you know, getting sick to his stomach, and and it was all arising from a, a migraine headache or some form of migraine headache, right? Which you know is. Um, there, there's more to this story. I'm not just telling you about my son and and why I didn't show up to work yesterday, uh, <laughs> but um, but it's it's actually there's a really important story connected to this. You see, because I used to get migraine headaches when I was a kid too, and um, you know, at least again, I don't know. You know, at the time they were saying that migraine headaches are what we call whatever we can't explain, you know, which sounds like, you know, sort of mid 1970s sort of medicine. <laughs> um, so I think there's much different definitions now. So I don't know technically what it is, right? I've I've heard, you know, um, descriptions of what is called a tension headache, which sounds more like what I've experienced. But again, but but there are aspects of a migraine that certainly apply as well. And, uh, and sensitivity to light is a very big one. Um, you know, extraordinary pain, like just really uncomfortable headaches, um, and, and cause nausea and cause, um, you know, lethargy and like, you just can't do anything, that kind of stuff. And my son was doing all of that yesterday. <clears throat> and, um, and so it was really kind of interesting that, you know, as I as I sat with him, I was, you know, I was really paying attention. I was paying attention to specifically I was paying attention to one thing, which is that um, I was paying attention to the fact that I wasn't doing content. <laughs> right. But not just content. I also had um, I had three different client meetings um, and I had some other stuff to do too, you know, just on the computer and just, you know, kind of, you know, had some stuff on the agenda for the day, you know. And as I sat there, you know, it was it was sort of an exercise in accepting that none of those expectations were going to come true, right? It just was not possible. I had to be there with my son. I mean, he needed me. You know, he's drifting in and out of sleep. He's, you know, I don't want to I would spare you the, the gory details, but there was a lot of cleaning up involved, you know. I was doing uh, laundry at like 11 o'clock last night, you know. <laughs> and so um, it was a rough day, right? And so... And so, so again, throughout the day, my, my sort of challenge, my practice, if you will, was, you know, paying attention to that sense of this is not okay. Like, I need to be working. This is bad, right? Because that's one of those places where judgment happens where, you know, that judgment winds up causing more difficulty, right? It makes it more strenuous it makes it more stressful it makes it more uncomfortable <clears throat> so that's you know so the important thing is to not judge it the important thing is to just recognize that well this is a day where the work that was expected to do is just not going to get done it just can't and, and once but again like whether i am okay with the fact that it can't get done or i'm not okay with the fact that it can't get done it still can't get done <laughs> right? Like, it's not like some, you know, magic happens if I get stressed enough and I get, you know, just, you know, upset enough about it that somehow, oh, okay, there you go. You can do the work again and your son's magically healed and, and feels all better now. <laughs> life doesn't bend itself to me that way. <clears throat> but what life does bend itself to me in the way is in the way that I can you know, like John Kabat-Zinn says, I, ca I, you know, I can't stop the waves, but I can learn to surf, right? And so yesterday, throughout the day, I was surfing, and I was surfing this particular wave, right? This wave of this, this feeling of, of almost like a dread feeling at not getting my work done. Like every moment, it can feel excruciating that I'm not getting my work done. 
And so I was surfing that wave instead of allowing it to, to, you know, manifest as a negative emotion, which manifests as a negative body feeling, right? Which that emotion comes from the resistance or the aversion to what is happening, right? So if instead I accept it and I allow it to be, then I can allow myself to kind of work through it. And there were moments where it got uncomfortable and I had to remind myself up, oh, just, you know, feel it. You're feeling the aversion. It's okay. Just let go. Just accept, right? Same thing I tell you guys all the time. Not you guys. Sorry. It's a mistake. Same thing I tell all of you all the time. <clears throat> really trying to break that habit. It's been five years now I've been trying to break this habit. That's a strong one using you guys. It happens very, very rarely, but it's still there. But anyway, so as I was, <laughs> something really funny happened at that point, right? Because as I was feeling so good, I, I just told somebody before, I was like on the wave, like, woo, I'm just surfing it all day. I felt like I was riding on that, the top of that crest of the wave, like, like nothing could shake me. I felt great. I felt, you know, proud of myself. But all the while, <laughs> all that time, there was something else that was happening. Something I didn't see happening. Something that was creeping up on me. Stealthily like a snake in the grass. <clears throat> and what I'm talking about is trauma. You see, all day I was spending the day with my son. Who was going through something that I used to go through. So I knew supreme, with supreme accuracy, I knew what he was feeling. If, although I, I will say I'm grateful to say that... What he seems to be going through seems to be less dramatic than what I used to go through. But I don't know that for sure because I'm not in his in his little body. But it's also considerably less frequent. <clears throat> he gets them like once a year. I used to get them like once every month or so, you know. Um, so there is a difference, right? But at the same time, I know sort of where he's at, right? And I also know that it's it's there's a, a particular difficulty with it because even, you know, I tried to, you know, we asked for the the children's Motrin and even though we try not to use a lot of that stuff, we keep some, you know, in case like there's really uncomfortable feelings. I mean, he's a little kid. He deserves some relief. I'm not, I'm not here to, Im, you know, impose my beliefs on him in that way. It's safe if you use it, you know, sparingly and stuff. And so, and so I gave him the children's motion, but then he like, you know, he got sick to his stomach and it all came back out, you know? And so, and that's what used to happen to me. And then, you know, for me, it was also a, a practice and a version that came from my mother, but, and that's what we're creeping up to here, right? Is that, well, anyway, the, the point is that there's nothing you can do for the poor kid, right? There's nothing that can be done. You just got to ride it out. You just got to endure it. And that's a hard thing to tell a 10-year-old. It's a hard thing for a 10-year-old to hear that I have to just sit here in this world of pain and fear and, and you know, weirdness and, and almost like a, 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 you know, what do they call when you, you delirium, right? Like from a fever almost. He's in and out of sleep all day. The poor kid, you know, wound up taking like four or five different showers just to get some kind of comfort. And, you know, and, and it just, it, it just, it was, yes, it was breaking my heart to see that. And yes, it was, you know, and again, I was, I was working with this whole concept of like, I have to be here for him. I must be here for him. And then what I realized is that all day for like 10 hours, <laughs> I was exposed to, you know, to my own trauma. I was exposed to the memory, like basically watching myself go through this again and all of the, now here's the thing though, right? And this is how trauma works. And this is, I want you to understand this, right? Trauma works implicitly in terms of our memory. It wasn't like I was sitting there saying to myself, oh man, remember when you were 10 years old and you used to, you know, stay home from school and, you know, in a dark room and, you know, with a cloth on your head and all that, you know, remember, 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 it wasn't like that at all. Remember, my mind was more about like, okay, I got to be here with him and not feel this emotional difficulty. I was practicing mindfulness with my own emotions through all that, <clears throat> And so all the while, implicitly in my nervous system, I was experiencing, I was reliving the experience of my own trauma. 
And of course, that also includes the trauma from my parents, right? Because all this time, like my father's not there and my, you know, there was one point that I remember, and this is a memory that's come up several times in my life that just weirdly just pops up that, you know, my mother, like telling me not to make so much noise when I was just like groaning in pain. Like it was like a pain in the ass for her to hear that noise. <laughs> Go mom. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, so all of that was happening inside my nervous system without my knowledge of it. And so then at like seven fifteen that evening, you know, after I canceled all my appointments, I didn't do any uh, content. What I did do is I took some time while I was sitting in the bed with my laptop while my son was asleep and, and did a, a little thing about my workshop tomorrow. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. But really, it was like basically calling in sick for the day. I did nothing, you know. And, <laughs> you know, and again, I didn't realize it. But then all of a sudden, my wife comes home at like 7.15 and I just like, I just laced into her, not, not laced in like, you. I've been waiting for you to get home, you know, but just like the first little thing she did, I was like, well, that's not fair. <laughs> and she was like, what? And then it just rolled into like this, like, I don't even remember all the words that were spoken, but it just became this like tumultuous, like fight. But first I like, I said, okay, I got to go and go to the store. So I'm leaving. I go out and actually at that point I wasn't even that upset. I remember, I feel, I remember feeling like I was like, okay, you know, it's just like a little annoyed kind of thing, you know? And I got to the store and I remember feeling some aversion from, from the person who was there. Like there's a one person who worked at the store who like, you know, was like really kind of unkind to me one time. And so I was like, oh God, there she is. And I noticed that and I said, wait, what was that? <laughs> What did you just say, Art? <laughs> what did your body and brain just do there? And that's what I realized. I was like, wait a second. I'm I'm triggered here. Something's going on here. And even in that, even knowing it, by the time I got home, like in within like the next five minutes, my wife and I were in like a full blown fight. Like I was saying things and, and so like like I was hearing it, but I was like, I couldn't stop it in a way. It was one of those like in intense moments. You know, I cried, she cried, you know, <clears throat> and I told her even, I said, I, I know this is my trauma. I, I said it like I was like, I had figured it out by that point. Like at some point between the, the grocery store and coming home and everything like that, I was like, wow, I am living a trauma response right now from my implicit memory of and, and how that's triggered my nervous system. Look at me. Look at how impatient I am right now. Look at how irritable I am. Look at how defensive I am right now. Look at how contemptuous I am right now. Looking at it from out here and seeing it like, whoa. But it wasn't, it still didn't stop it. And tears were shed and, and, and insults were hurled and, and apologies were not made. And so here's the thing though, right? I went to bed last night. I took a, I have these, um, like sort of, uh, they're, they're, they're not sleeping pills, not chemical pharma, pharmacological or anything. They're, um, they're herbal. They're, uh, part cannabis. There's like a, a little percentage of cannabis, but mostly other herbs that help you fall asleep. And folks, I'll tell you, this thing is called midnight tablets. And I, I think they're only local here in Colorado, but if you ever come for a visit, pick up a few tins because they are amazing. I, I could drink like a, a three cups of tea right before going to bed. If I take one of these, I'm asleep in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I took one of those. I was like, I'm just so exhausted. The best thing for me to do right now is just to go to sleep. So I took one and I lay down and I went to sleep <clears throat> by like 930 last night or something like that. You know, um, no, that's not true because I had to do the laundry. So no, it was probably it was later on. But I, it's all blurring together anyway. Um, but the point is, though, that that because I was able to see myself doing this and I was able to notice that that I was in this nervous system response to my implicit memory what it allowed me to do was to not get sort of entangled in it 
right? It allows me to stay out here from it, right? Arms distance, right? Like the issue is happening here and I can watch it out here. I'm not in it and, and among it, right? <clears throat> and when I can do that, that's when I can stay regulated, at least to the extent that um, that I'm able. But but even to experience the dysregulation again as an objective experience, not getting entangled in it, right? So just allowing my body to be dysregulated, like, hey, look at what's happening as I'm doing the laundry. Look at this. This is like wild, right? And so now that allows for something that's much much more important. Right. Because now what happens next? Right. Now, last night, my wife went to sleep and then I went to sleep. And so we didn't do anything to repair or reconcile last night. But that's the question. What comes next? So this morning. Pardon me. Caffeine is definitely necessary today. I am very tired. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why I thought I think I thought about going to sleep early last night. <laughs> When your brain thinks something, it thinks it's actually happening. I guess that's what's going on here. Um, but but the thing is, though, this morning, <clears throat> I had the choice, right? This morning, I could have, you know, said, hey, you know, if you hadn't said this, then none of that would have happened. And that would have been true, right? There were things that she did and ways, and there was a specific thing that I told her about that she did that, you know, was actually not very kind and not very supportive. And 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 even when I told her that I was in my trauma, she still, you know, it was like it was like kind of showing that she was impatient with me. Let's put it that way. Like she had enough of my of <laughs> my antics, you know. And that's not fair for somebody who's in a trauma response because I'm not enjoying this any more than you are. Trust me. I wish I could switch it off, but I can't. And so, and so, so even, even though it was true this morning to say that, Hey, you know, you could have not done that. And then this wouldn't have happened and that, and the bah, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, which just was really just more defensiveness and contemptuousness and all that stuff. And, and is almost guaranteed to wind up with more either either one person's going to submit to the other right and, and say okay i'm sorry I, I won't do it again just in the interest of, of peace in the home right or it's going to continue in a fight and a dispute and an argument and a conflict and we all know where that's going to go right so either of those options not very not very positive not very um you know delectable <laughs> <laughs> but then there's another way, right? If instead of thinking about, you know, or pointing out the things that are, um, <clears throat> you know, the ways in which I could defend myself, ways in which I could save face in some way, instead of doing that, what I could do, and I'm happy to tell you what I did do, I practice forgiveness. I practiced forgiveness for, for my wife because she didn't understand what she was doing. I, I guarantee you she didn't even realize what she was she did at that moment to, to trigger me the way she did. And and frankly, it's not fair for me to, you know, hold that on her because nobody would have ever known that that would trigger me, right? It wasn't fair. So I forgave her, but I also forgave myself. <clears throat> right? Because again, it's very easy to feel, you know. So this really interesting one of our one of our tribe here uh, one of our one of the listeners here um, actually sent me something not too long ago that that showed the difference between shame and guilt right and guilt is something that we feel over an action right I did that thing I feel guilty for doing that thing whereas shame is more of an identification right shame is I'm a horrible person that's why I do these things. Right. In the most basic sense. Right. <clears throat> and so and so it would be easy for me to get into a place of shame. Right. It's easy for and, and then specifically because of trauma, because it's something in my body really is. Right. It's not it's not something that's an, an action. It is my a form of myself. It's my physical self. And I do not have control over it necessarily. Not all the time anyway. So, so it's inviting shame 
And once you're in shame, that's, ooh, that's a sticky place to get out of. Guilt is something you can work with, but shame, that's, that's tough. And so forgiveness allows me to look at it as, yes, it is my body, but it's not me. It's not my fault. I didn't create this. I didn't create the, 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 the conditioning and the experiences that arrived in this nervous system and the way this, this body holds its implicit memories. I didn't create the trauma that lives in my implicit memories. It's not all on me. <laughs> it's not my fault. From here on, it's my responsibility, but it's not my fault. So therefore, it's not shame. And therefore, it is guilt. But the beautiful thing is that guilt is something that can be addressed with reparation. You just got to repair the rupture. The, the, the relationship was ruptured by my actions, not by my essence, but by my actions, which were just a, a, a response to a trauma memory. That's guilt. And so from there, I can say, okay. And as I did this morning, I said, hey, I'm very sorry for what I put you through last night. I didn't like going through it, and I know you didn't like going through it, and I'm really sorry that that happened. Please understand that it was not within my control, and I did not realize what I was doing, and I would never intentionally do something like that. And in that moment, this whole ugly, nasty thing became something really beautiful. But here's the important thing. I shouldn't even use that word because it didn't become anything that it wasn't already, right? And it's really important to recognize that just because it, it, it manifested as something beautiful in the morning where, you know, I, I apologize and there was forgiveness expressed and there was acceptance and there was a hug and there was beautiful, you know, feelings of support and, and, and understanding that like we're both learning about this and it was just like, it just became this really beautiful moment, Right. Again, didn't become something. It was this beautiful experience this morning. But that's not like the tears rolled back into our eyes last night. That's like the, the hurtful words came tumbling back into our mouths somehow. And so the point is that both are true. Right? It is true that it was very painful and very ugly and that I had everything to do with that pain and ugliness. But it is also true that it is beautiful and it is inspiring. And I had everything to do with that beauty and that inspiration too. And once we can sort of accept <laughs> that these things are both always there, just a question of what kind of balance and flow they're happening... That's when we can start working with these things. And that's where we recognize the, the value of forgiveness, of just forgiving ourselves, and forgiving the other person who said that nasty thing or made that gesture or forgot to do that thing or whatever it is. And in that forgiveness, that's where we allow for the side of this thing to be shown that is beautiful. That's where we allow ourselves to know the beauty, even in an ugly situation. This is all illustrated in the, um, the uh, symbol of the yin-yang, which is um, yin-yang, yin-yang, <laughs> which is the, uh, the, the symbol of tai chi, right? And, and, and Taoism, right? Which is to say, well, the, the original um, symbol is actually made up of two fish. I think I told you all this the other day. It's made up of two fish, koi fish, right? Swimming in a circle. And, and it's a black koi and a white koi, but the eyes of the white koi are black and the eyes of the black koi are white. And so the symbol comes to mean, just as I'm describing to you, that, that even in the darkness, there is light, and even in the light, there is darkness. Even in happiness, there is sadness. Even in sadness, there is happiness. Even in pain, there is suffering. But in pain, there is also gratitude. The pain, I feel, is teaching me something. Potentially. The pain, I feel, is guiding me away from something that's dangerous. 
if I allow it to. So if I can see the goodness, the, the, the potential in my pain, well, then it doesn't hurt so much anymore. And so this all really is tied in with forgiveness. And it just so happens, forgive me for taking another sip of my tea before it gets cold. Um, it just so happens, I've forgiven myself for taking a sip of tea. <laughs> It just so happens that tomorrow morning I'm running a workshop on forgiveness and I want you to be there. I really do because you know what? I guarantee that there's something I'm going to tell you that you never thought of in forgiveness. And I don't say that in a boastful way. I'm just saying that we have like some pretty universal ideas about forgiveness that aren't always very accurate. <laughs> and as always, I'm going to approach this from a, a scientific view, right? So we're going to talk about physiologically what's happening in your body when you forgive and what's happening when you don't forgive. You're really going to benefit from this, I promise. So I hope you can make it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate it uh, share another um, you know, personal story there with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, and I really do hope that you can make it tomorrow to the, uh, the meeting, uh, the workshop rather. There's going to be a link in the description to read more about what tomorrow's workshop is all about and, and, and the link that you can join with. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks again. I wish you well. I'll see you later.